Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create a damage amount indicator like you see in Fortnite. So if I were to hit play, we can test this out and show you what we're going to make today. So I'm in, pick up the gun, if I then shoot the AI or the player over here, you can see we are doing a certain amount of damage, and that is then appearing on screen as a number, and it's going to be kind of fighting off and going over in a certain direction like this. So this is what we're going over and creating today. You can see it's not actually damaging the player, it's just showing how much damage it will do. However, that's just because I've disconnected the one node which will do the damage, just because I want it to be here constantly, so I can fully show you it like this, and I'm just doing a random amount of damage. This is incredibly easy to customize for yourself, so you can change the numbers, the color, the font, the size, the direction, the fade, everything you want to customize is very easy to do so, and I'll show you exactly how to do that as well. So this is what we'll be going over and creating today, and again you can see this works in any direction as well. So without further ado, let me delete this code, and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do, is we want to actually create this widget in which the numbers and the damage is going to appear. So to do that we can hit control space, right click, go to user interface, and create a widget blueprint, I'm going to create a user widget, and I'm just going to name this one W underscore for widget, DMG for damage, AMT for amount, so damage amount and we'll open it up straight away. In here, all we're going to do is add in a canvas panel and then add in some text on that canvas panel. This text I'm going to anchor to the middle of the screen, position X and Y being 0, and the alignment being 0 0.5, 0 0.5, just to make sure it's perfectly centered, and to keep with that, I'll make sure to take size content and justification in the middle. This just means that the text is always going to be in the middle of this widget. Just to test it out, we can input, let's say, 100, into here, and you can see that's now in the middle of the screen, like so. So compile and save that. Now this here is where you can also customize it, so if you wanted this color to be red, for example, because it's damaged, or if you want it to be blue, or anything along those lines, that's very easy to do, and you can also give it an outline, or change the font, all this great stuff, the same as you would normally customize any kind of font or text in your game, you can do that here. So for example, let's have it look like this. Then another important part of this system is we want to make sure it kind of fades on and off so it looks really nice. That's also very easy to do. So in the bottom left hierarchy, we want to select our text. Then we want to go to the animations tab. If you don't have the animations tab, don't worry. Go up to window at the top and just hit animation. And that will then bring it down here for you like so. We want to hit the plus animation. And then I'll name this fade, for example. And then make sure text is still selected. Then select fade and then add a track in this animation, and we want to add in a text, or whatever it is that you've called it. Then on this track, we want to add a track on here, and we want to add in a render opacity. This is going to actually allow us to make it fade on and off by changing how visible it is. So to start with, we want it to be zero. Then I want the total duration of this animation to be one second, so I'm going to drag out from here to one second, like so. I'm going to go forward about 0.15 seconds and set it to be 1, so it's going to fade on very quickly as we want the player to be able to see it immediately, but we don't want it to just suddenly appear. Then I'm going to go to about 0.75 seconds and then add another keyframe so it's going to be staying at 1, it's completely visible here for this entire duration, and then I'm going to go to the end and set this to 0. So essentially this is going to fade on very quickly, stay on, and then fade off over the duration of 1 second, as you can see here, it's not incredibly visible. So if I select, deselect it, we can then see it's going to be doing something like this. So you see it goes on and then off. All we're doing in here is fading. We're going to actually do the movement elsewhere. So we compile and save that. Then the final thing we want to do inside of here is we want to make sure we can actually change the value of this. Because we don't want it to always be 100. We want to actually make sure we can change it to be the damage we are dealing. So with the text selected, we're going to go to content, text, and hit the bind and create binding. In here we're going to create a variable naming this damage amount once again and we're going to set this to be a float. Then we're going to drag this out, get it and then drag that straight into the return value here and it should get a two text float like so. And that's all we need to do, we can change this variable later on for the amount of damage we are dealing. We'll compile and save that and finally there is one more thing is we need to go to the event graph now and I will delete event preconstruct and event tick and we just want to play the animation. So on event construct, what we're going to do is very simply get our fade animation and play animation forward. So when this widget is now spawned in, 
is going to be playing this fade animation so it will fade on stay on screen and then it will fade off perfectly like so how we want and that is all we need to do inside the widget so we can now close that and that will now display our text so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blueprint for this so let's hit control space to open our content browser again right click go to blueprint class and create an actor and this one I'm going to name BP underscore damage amount opening that up straight away all we're going to do in here is simply hold the location of this widget spawn in move it and set the damage amount so this is all very simple and it's just nice to have it all contained in one blueprint here first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a widget so we can add the widget here and this widget is going to be the one we just created so I'll search for w underscore damage amount adding that in there for the widget class like so and you can see we now have our text in there perfectly as we had it before you can change the size and everything in here however I'm not going to bother doing that one thing I do want to do is change space from world to screen and you can see we can't see it now but essentially what that means is it will just now actually constantly face the player so no matter which direction the player is facing the widget will always be facing them and it will look perfect so they can shoot from any direction or they can be moving around after shooting and they'll always be able to read how much damage they've done. We'll compile and save that and next we want to go over to the event graph. We'll again delete event tick and event act begin overlap as we only want to use event begin play. So what we want to do first is we don't need to spawn the widget as when we spawn the blueprint elsewhere the widget will be spawned in but we do want to set the text to be the correct number so we have the correct damage amount. So we're going to get the widget from the top left. Out of this, we're going to get widget out of there. So we're getting the widget and then getting the widget from the widget. So essentially we're getting the specific widget it is. Out of the return value, we want to cast to whatever you named your widget. So I named mine W underscore damage amount like so. And we'll connect that in there. Out of this, we want to come out of as W damage amount. I'm going to set damage amount. So the variable we created earlier as again this is actually going to be changing the text due to the binding so how do we now know what we want to set it to well we can right click promote to variable and call this one damage amount again so we now have this as a variable which we can then change when we spawn in this blueprint so again the widget we are changing when we spawn in the widget here and then we'll change it when we spawn in the blueprint elsewhere that'll make more sense when we actually do that and that's when we actually damage whatever it is we're damaging as that's then going to have the actual damage amount so with this variable selected we want to make sure we tick instance editable and expose on spawn so when we actually do spawn in this blueprint we can immediately change this value then what we want to do is right click get actor location right click that promote a variable and name this start lock or start location and this is because we now obviously want to move it as well so it's not just going to suddenly appear and fade on and off it's going to appear fade on and off while also moving in a certain direction just to give it a bit of life and just to make it look a little bit nicer out of this variable we're going to get a vector plus a vector we'll just get an add node and we're going to add in whatever value you want so this is going to control where it ends up so for me the values I found nice which I was using at the beginning of the video are minus 25 minus 25 and 100 so for the one second I have this on screen, I found that moving this amount looks perfect for me. And actually it's not 100, sorry, it's 50. But again, you can customize this so you can have it as just 25, 25 instead of minus 25. That'll mean it will go left instead of right. You can have it as 50, you can have it as 100, whatever it is that you want. But I found that this works best because it's moving, but it's not moving too much so the player can very easily still read it without having to focus on it. It's just there, they can see it nice and easily, which is obviously what you want for the kind of game we're making here. We then want to right click that return value, promote it to variable, naming this end lock or end location, like so, connecting that in there. So we now have the start location and the end location that we want to go between. So how do we now nice and smoothly go between those values? Well, we're gonna use a timeline. So we'll come out of this and get add timeline and name this whatever you want. So I name mine move T for move timeline, making sure it goes into play like so. I'm then gonna double click this to open it up and I'm gonna add in a track, add in a float track. I'll name this move track. Now we want to set the length of the timeline. My widget is gonna be on screen. So the animation is one second long. So it's gonna be on screen for one second. So I'm gonna make this 1.25 seconds. 
The reason why I'm making it slightly longer is so it still looks like it's moving before it fades off. Because if I make them both one second, you will see it actually stop, but I want it to be nice and smoothly moving the whole time. So I'm going to make it continue moving after it's faded off and disappeared, just to make it look a little bit nicer. In this track, I'm then going to right click, add key to curve float, time of zero, value of zero. Right click, add key to curve float, time of 1.25 or your maximum length, and a value of one. And I'll zoom to fit vertical and horizontal here. We can then compile, save that, and close the timeline like so. And now you see we have this move track float variable here. We can drag out of this and get a lerp vector, and that will then go between the values of A and B via this track we've just made, so it'll be nice and smooth. A and B wants to be our start and end location. So A, where we start, will also be our start location. B, where we want to go to, will be our end location. So we now have something like this. So that's great, we're going between start and end locations, but we want to actually make sure we're setting the location. So out of update of the timeline, we're going to set actor location with the new location being that return value from the lerp there, like so. And the final thing in here is out of finished of the timeline, we want to simply just destroy actor. So as soon as this is finished, it's off screen, we're just going to get rid of it as well so we don't just have an empty blueprint in the level, because if you have too many of those, it'll obviously get a little bit laggy. Because there's not much in here, it probably won't do that, but if you have a lot in here, it will, and it's just good practice to do it anyway. So we'll compile and save that. And that is all we need to do inside this blueprint. Again, when we spawn it in, we're setting the damage and then just moving it. Nice and simple. So we can close that like so. Now what we want to do is actually set up spawning this in when we damage a player. So for me, I'm just using the third person blueprint. Now I'm in a first person template. So what I did was I just did add, add feature or content pack, and I added third person like so. You don't need to do that. I just did it for a nice quick character. So I'm gonna select the character I want, drag him in like so, and then I'm gonna open it up. So again, you do whatever it is you want, whether it's another player, it's an animal, or it's an enemy, it's an AI, whatever, just open up what you are damaging. And then you're gonna open full blueprint editor, and in here, very simply, all I'm going to do is right click and get event any damage. So you might already have this set up if you have a damaging system. If so, perfect, just add this onto the end, what I'm about to do. Now here you would normally have your, like, your health minus the damage and then the death system, all that. Again, I'm not going to go into that today, but I do have other videos going over that if you want. All I'm going to do is, after you've done all your damage code, we want to spawn actor from class with the class being our BP underscore damage amount. And the spawn transform is going to be get actor transform. So we're spawning in our damage where the player currently is, or the AI or whatever it is for you. And you can see we have damage amount here as well because we did instance editable and expose on spawn. That we're just going to connect into damage on event any damage here. So however much damage the player is taking will be put into this blueprint. That blueprint will be spawned, which will spawn in the widget, with that damage in as well, and it will move and fade. You can kind of see how it's all piecing together now. So we'll compile and save that, as again, that is all we need to do in here. Just make sure we're spawning in the blueprint. We'll close that now. Now you may already have this part set up, but what I'm gonna do is actually apply damage. So for me, I'm gonna be doing that inside of my projectile blueprint. So that'll be first person, blueprints, BP first person projectile. You might have this code set up, what I'm going to do is just delete these bits here as I don't need them just for what I'm doing but if you want them keep them then out of event hit I'm going to apply damage like so damaged actor being other the base damage what I'm going to do is just right click get a random integer max being 150 for example and the return value going to the base damage there for you, you would probably want to set this up to be an actual damage amount or based upon what gun you're using or have it be random but not 0 to 150. Choose what you want, but for me, for the purpose of this video, just to showcase it working, I'm doing a random integer like this. Then out of apply damage, I'm going to go into destroy actor like so, just to get rid of the projectile afterwards. So we'll compile and save that. And again, the two things I've just done where we apply damage and do event any damage, you will want to make sure you customize that perfect for you. So again, I'm doing this where I'm only spawning in the blueprint on damage, I'm not actually doing damage, and I'm applying a random damage to everything that I hit. So again, I do have other videos going over this in more detail if you want. But once you've done that, we can close this like so. And with that, 
That should now be it done working for us. So let's hit play and test it out. I'll go over here, pick up a gun, and I actually have two spawned in, but it doesn't matter. If I hit it, you can see 14, 82, 107, 2. So we now have a random a number spawning in, and it's going to be with the font, the color, everything that we set up. And if it's going to move around, it's going to be constantly facing the player perfectly like so, and against a random number because that's what I chose. Spawns in, fades on, fades off, and actually moves in the direction we set up as well. So this is working perfectly, so I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set up a damage indicator system similar to what you see in Fortnite where when you shoot the player, the amount of damage you are dealing to that AI or that player, whatever it is, is going to appear on screen so you can actually see what it is and it's going to have a nice fade and move location like you can see perfectly here. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful and if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.